so I've got the Vaporesso Gen S kit to have a look at. Uh, I've already done a review and a test on the original Gen, so I think the board will probably probably be the same. What I really want to know though is how they've changed the 510. So I did have a talk to the Vaporesso rep, and I said, look, what's the difference between the Gen S and the original Gen? Has the 510 changed? And uh, they didn't make any comment whether you know the board or anything had changed to the S or what else had changed. But it, they did say that the 510 had been improved. So that's the main thing I want to have a look at. I've got a feeling, because they don't really say on their website and the rep didn't say anything, the board's probably the same in the S to the, the original gen. They're pretty cagey about improvements or what's, what's changed. So um, I know the tank is different in the kit. And um, just quickly on the tank, yeah, not bad, not bad. Um, they've got the dual core mesh uh, coils, which I think are quite good. Not quite up to the Freemax coil quality, I think, for flavor. Not quite, but, you know, still a pretty respectable tank for a kit tank. And I uh, haven't really used it a whole lot, but, um, yeah, not bad. I think it looks pretty good, too. But um, mainly the complaints with the Gen, with the original Gen, the 510 coming apart. Now, I had a look at this in the original video on the Gen, and uh, it looked really solid. Like, the, the 510 looked looked very solid. Uh, I even tried to take all the screws out and I couldn't get it to budge at all. And uh, that one I'd, I'd used a lot. I'd used it as my um, main device for months, I think six months or more, and dropped it and it was in terrible condition. And I didn't have any problems, but still get a lot of people saying, you know, what's up with the 510? Is it gonna fail? Um, seems to be sort of the main complaint. So we'll get inside this one. We'll have a look at the 510, what's changed, if anything. Same as the board, we'll see if anything's changed with that as well. I don't have the, the original gen that's been sent off to, to um, Aussie Geek Vapor to do some TC testing on. Actually, I think he's already done the post. Anyway, I don't have the original gen, so I can't put them side by side, but I can probably bring up a picture and, um, yeah, just, just have a look at the picture of the, the original gen board and the S. So, yeah, let's get into it. So, just like the original gen... The inner assembly and tray is actually quite easy to get out. It's it's basically just the screws you can see. These guys whoop, stuck to the magnet. There, 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 and these two. Not that you should be taking your device apart for any reason unless you're experienced and you're happy to poke around and accept any risks from doing so. Um, but pretty easy to take apart. Now, um, so we'll take a look at the board and just compare that. To the original just looking at the date code on here 2020-05-28 very recent so yeah only only a couple of months old um, since this board was manufactured so yeah, very recently manufactured board um, there is some other codes on here at the top so I might just compare that also just I'll just physically see if the design has changed but I I really doubt it I pretty much guarantee this is not a guarantee I would almost guarantee that the board is exactly the same I don't I don't see why there's any need to change it and they didn't advertise any changes which if they had have done any changes I'm um, for the better I'm sure they would have um, let us know about it because that would be a selling point so yeah, everything else exactly the same, just like the gen. It's all pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward, standard kind of configuration of device. A long skinny board that sits on the side of the sled. Um, it's quite a compact board actually. Even even a little bit a little bit more compact than normal. Um, no conformal coating on the board. I see it's look very dry. Yeah, very dry, no no coating at all. Um, it is an STM32FEC microcontroller, an ST microcontroller. Got a whole lot of MOSFETs here, which look like name brand. They've got a logo on it that I do recognize, but I can't remember the, the actual name. Um, but at least it's good to see name brand components and not with the serial number scrubbed off because some manufacturers do either laser off or grind off the codes 
It does look like a decent board. Just like the last one. Looks looks nice and clean. Doesn't seem to be solder flux or any little leftover bits of solder balls. All the components seem to be well positioned. Uh, soldering looks nice and bright. Nothing in, you know, misplaced. Or sort of sitting off to the side. Um, yeah, pretty neat, pretty neat. It's really not as the same as the last one. Not much to say about the board. It's just a really standard, standard regulated high wattage board with some MOSFETs, a microcontroller, big inductor, current shunt, buttons, and other bits and pieces, charging circuitry, diode there. That would be part of the boost converter for the charging, which I'm pretty sure that was one of the components that got the hottest in the charging in the original gen. Yeah, pretty straightforward. All right, there's the 510. It looks really similar. Yeah, it looks quite similar to the original. I mean, again, it looks... It looks really solid. I don't know, what are you guys doing to your mods? Why, why are there so many people getting wobbly? I don't know how many. But some people getting wobbly 510s on these. Now, the the, the frame of the, um, the Gen and the Gen S is polycarbonate. So all I'm thinking is maybe it's starting to crack around the case. Like it's actually pulling this whole assembly through the case somehow. I mean, it could have been an issue of the um, this inner, inner actual 510 pulling through this sort of little mounting bracket they've got here. Better make sure I'm in frame. Yep. Um, it could be a matter of this actually starting to pull through this frame, but gee, it looks just as solid as the last one. It, yeah, I don't know if there's any improvements. We'll have to go have a look at the um, the original video. I did. I didn't take it all the way out because I just I couldn't easily sort of pop this apart. Um, so maybe they've made the tolerances a bit better. Kind of just coming up with random theories now because I don't really know what they've changed. It looks pretty much the same. Okay, so there's all three screws loose on this little retaining frame. What I might do is see if I can zoom in. So it's basically the 510 section itself retained by this big frame held in with three screws pressing up against the top panel of the case. And I imagine this is going to be like last time where um, I take the screws out and I still don't even know how it comes apart. This is what I got to last time. Something tricky about this but I'm clearly not smart enough to figure out. I've got a feeling like this outer screws into this cap and then this piece is sandwiched in between, but maybe they use a special tool with a 510 thread because I can't see any other way. I mean, if you look in there, so you've got a ridge around this bottom 510 piece here. And it can't go through this frame. Because it's not slotted or anything. It kind of looks like it's got a bit of a cut out there, but it's it's not really. Um, there's no way that can just pull through this frame. It couldn't have gone in from that, from, you know, top-wise. That's really weird. Okay, I'll get a little bit more violent. Okay, so I've got no idea how this can come apart and um, I can't force it anymore or I'm literally just going to just snap this thing straight out of the case. So I've had the pliers onto it. I did desolder the, the 510 wires just to get me some better access. Um, the only thing I can come up with is that this cap here is somehow threaded onto this this actual outer metal 510 piece and at the factory they might use a tool to drive it in I can get just the tiniest bit of movement either way out of it but then it'll it'll just lock up after 
oh, just a few degrees. I don't know. I mean, I, I hate that um, I can't see exactly what's going on and I can't even get the damn thing apart, but like, I kind of think if I'm getting to this point where I'm just going to destroy it, getting it apart, then um, I can't really give it much, much more of a better recommendation that it's going to hold up than that. Like, kind of inconclusive there, and I can't even tell you what they've improved, if they have. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't go anywhere else with it than that. Um I was gonna get it, get the tank back on it, and just try bashing it on the bench just to see if I can get any movement out of it. Is that gonna be a bit, a bit gory? Give that a good whack. Oh, I mean, it's still solid as a rock. Hang on, let's just. Has that done anything at all? Did feel a little bit tighter coming off. I might just starting to um, mash the threads a bit there. No, oh, no, it's still fine. Yeah. The case is going to be weaker than that attachment, I think. Like if it's starting to, you know, pull out of the case, you've got to think that it's probably the, the polycarbonate that's broken. Um, and like, we're just well into just flat out mod abuse, <laughs> really just, you know, nothing's, nothing's bulletproof. If you drop it on the, if you drop it on the ground and it lands tank first, and this has got, you know, cells in it, so it's got its full weight and it hits from a decent, height at a certain angle yeah I mean you could break it but it's not going to stand up to every possible kind of impact like that I don't think that's that's reasonable you know I like I like my devices to be as strong as possible um, honestly because I'm clumsy and um, I'm I wouldn't say necessarily rough with devices but I don't baby them either like I'm not they're not just sitting on a desk I take them to work I say it all the time take them to work in my pocket in the car on the bench occasional drop you know just life stuff carrying it everywhere with you um and as i said my original one stood up fine so you know if they have improved improved the mounting then yeah i just wouldn't worry about it honestly i think if you get to the point where you've broken that out of the device it's it's just had a hard life and um time to get a new one so yeah that's all i've got for you um hopefully that's in some way helpful but um thanks for watching